Hi everybody, Tom Waters here with Creative Waters Art. Thanks for joining me. In this video, what I'm going to try to do is just do a, a short, compacted video that just takes some of the tips out of how I approached this painting and talk to you a little bit about the decisions that I made. Um, I have a longer video that you can look at, which is the demonstration of, of actual painting of this, which has a lot more detail, but in this one what I want to do is just do a sort of an overview of the decision process that I go through both during and before, importantly before, I start this painting. So I'm going to cover a few things like the choices I made, the composition, things that I changed, and then a little bit about um, the techniques that I used and, and why I chose to do certain things. So thanks for joining me, and if you want more detail and even more information, you can check out the longer video, which is um, a semi-full demonstration of this painting. Thanks. Okay, I wanted to create a shorter video that just focuses on some of the decisions leading up to a painting and then some of the challenges that I'm faced with during a painting and the decisions that I make in order to resolve those challenges. I'm using my latest painting, First Snow on Bragg Hill Barn. If you want to see me actually demonstrating the, the, the painting, then I do have a longer video here on my channel where you can see me actually putting the paint down and there are tips and some instruction in there as to the decisions that I made. But this is more of the approach to a painting and some of the thought process that goes into how I compose it, how the decisions that I need to make, how I crop it, um, and those things that lead up to creating a painting, a work of art like this. So um, this is the painting, the finished painting, and once I knew that I wanted to paint this particular scene, I went on site and I took probably 30 or 40 photos. So this is one of the photos. This is the one that I end up cropping and using um, as my source photograph. I knew that I wanted to paint the barn and I knew I wanted the barn to be the focal point. Um, so then I had to make decisions. I walked all around the property. I took photos from over here on the left, walked into the field, went to the right. Um, but I knew that I needed to have some visual interest um, and the barn was going to be the primary Point of interest but the ski slope behind here and the snow on these hills was going to be a secondary interest. I needed some middle ground and I needed some foreground so that's why I ended up getting into a position where I could compose the picture to have these rocks and this tree over here with these branches coming in like this. Um, so that's sort of like the initial approach is to take, uh, take a lot of photos when I'm painting something like this. I knew that this was an iconic and historic barn so I, I'm going to want the painting to be fairly accurate. But then there's some things that I don't like about the scene. Um, I would have liked it if there were some trees over here. Uh, and I thought about adding some trees next to the silo to sort of frame out this edge. But I knew that it wouldn't be true to the actual location. And so I, I ended up choosing not to do that. And I'll tell you how I resolved that issue. I know I didn't want this blue house in here because it's just distracting. And I've seen some historical photos where I don't think this house was originally here or always here. So I didn't have a problem with taking that out because I don't think it adds anything to the painting. Um, and then there were just some other minor compositional choices that I make. So a lot of times I don't work from a photo or I'll only use a photo as a loose reference. Um, and instead what I'll do is I'll get my composition worked out by doing a bunch of sketches and then choose which sketch I'm going to use in order to paint. In this case though I decided I am going to work from a photo because I do want the accuracy. So I, I started with this one. And one of the things that I do um, when I'm either doing a sketch to change the composition or sometimes working like I did here in Photoshop is um, I try to keep the detail minimal. So in Photoshop, I'll apply a filter. In this, um, I might apply a blur filter, or in this case, I applied an oil paint filter that pulls some of that detail out so I don't get, you see all this detail in here. Um, I kind of reduce some of that by using a filter so I don't get too distracted by it. But you can see the blue house is gone here. And you can see also, if you compare the sky, um, I didn't want too much flat white. I want a little more interest up there. So I had the top of the clouds come down lower and just sit on top of the hill and put a little sky in here compositionally. So then from there, you know, I had to take my format, which was a, a ratio of two to one. And I'm using, a, I, I painted on a 15 inch by 30 inch canvas and then I, I, you know, again, I, I would have liked to have a tree over here, but I didn't want to add something that wasn't there necessarily. So instead, I cropped this a little tighter, made the barn a little bit more prominent. 
and brought you know it over to the edge more here. I still don't love the fact that there's a little space here, but it's a better solution than having a lot of empty space here. Also, this upper left-hand corner, there was empty space that I didn't like. Didn't balance well with all that was going on with the tree over here. It's like too heavy over here and then nothing up in this quadrant up here. I solved that really simply by just putting a few birds up here in this corner. So instead of this being empty space that the eye kind of goes here and doesn't know where to go and gets lost, these birds kind of just anchor that corner and the fact that they're flying into the frame, they bring the eye back over into the center of the painting. So that's how I solved that small problem. Um, then uh, often if I'm working in Photoshop or even sometimes with a sketch, what I'll do is um, create a black and white value sketch or in this case just take the photo and turn it to black and white and you can see here that the range this is uh, my color picker if I choose these colors that black is pretty much pure black and the whites up here there's some really strong whites um, so they get right up in there into the almost pure white range some of them are a little bit more gray um, but the range is pretty full here is from a value standpoint my darkest dark here in here my highest contrast areas are this dark in here and this light right in here. And if we look then at the color one, what's interesting to note too, if we look at the color picker, is that even though there's a fair amount of color in here, there's some yellows and blues and purples and browns and greens, none of these are highly saturated. If we look, if, if things were really saturated, they'd be up in this corner here, but if you look at any of these colors, you can see they're way down here they're low in saturation so there's not a ton of highly saturated color going on here so even though my value scale goes from one extreme to the other whites to blacks my color scale and the and the saturation of those colors is much more muted which is in fitting with the mood that I was trying to capture which was to have this look like sort of a, it had, you know it's an early morning and it had just snowed and there's a dusting of hill uh, snow on the hills up here but it's really muted as a winter scene if this photograph, if I had photographed this on a bright sunny day with the light streaming in and really hammering the side of this barn uh, and these trees and along these trees, I'd probably get more saturation and more color. But that would be a different painting. It'd be a different mood and uh, I'd approach it differently. So that's um, sort of how I approach it. And then what I do before when I go to paint it is I take my photo, I take my, the, you know, my reference photo and I drew a grid, I printed it out and drew a grid across it and then I transferred that drawing onto my canvas so that I would get a nice accurate uh, rendering of the barn, get the placement right, get the orientation right, get the perspective right. And then um, one of the other things to look at here is, is when I was doing my composition, I sort of break this canvas into thirds roughly what I have here is it, it, it works pretty well on the rule of thirds as far as where to place things. You know, my center of interest is going to be right around this area here, in this, you know, around the entrance to the barn to this little shed off the side here because there's high contrast, nice lines, nice edges. So that's sort of one center of interest, the primary one. There's a second one here in this third right here where there's light playing on the hill and the slopes and the ski slopes behind and the branches coming in front. And then the field itself and the barn sits sort of on this one third line. So it, it worked out pretty well as far as choosing how to compose this. And that's part of what went into that process of deciding how to arrange this. So again, if you look here and I sort of, I mean, roughly divide this up into thirds, I don't know where they are exactly, but if they were, say, right about here, right about roughly here and here you can see how here's my center of interest on this third line and down close to here here's a second center of interest here and this line here is sitting on the third instead of up in the middle or too far below so that's part of the process of approaching it um, other things that I had to think about before I picked up the brush is how I wanted to treat the paint treatment and by paint treatment, I, I mean, did I want heavy, thick brush strokes with a lot of texture, you know, across all of this painting or across part of the painting? And in this case, again, because I wanted this sort of subdued winter feeling and I just I didn't want things just jumping right off the canvas at you, I wanted to approach this by doing a lot of layers of thin color. So these hills back here, we, 
if I get closer in here. Um, this is just a lot of scumbling. So there's a, you know, just changing up my color and my, my values and scumbling on layer after layer of color and then putting some light blues and some whitish blues over the top for the edges where the snow is sitting. Um, so there's just a lot of, um, a lot of thin layers of paint. You can see there's no heavy brush strokes here. I'm zoomed right in and you really can't pick out a brush stroke in this area here in these back hills. Let's zoom back out here. And then, you know, same thing over here is I wanted to keep then this tree here to be somewhat smooth and easy. Not a lot of brush strokes that you see in here. I mean, there's some here for a little bit of texture for the tree, but I didn't want it to be uh, a thick impasto type um, rendering of this. Let's go back. There we go. Um, and so that sort of, you know, was the overall approach to how I wanted to apply paint here. Same thing with the field. Just like I did up here now, while there's more texture in here, this is several layers. If you watch the longer video, there's, you know, three, four, five layers of paint going on, more like five or six layers of paint going on to create these fields. Um, and that gives me some depth. And I like doing my fields and my grasses and my hills that way because uh, it gives me the opportunity to get a lot of variation and a lot of depth. Even the snow on top of the grass color here is multiple layers. You know, there's sort of a darker shadow color, grayer, a little bit bluer, and then some lights on top. So then the next thing um, I wanted to think about before I even started was how I wanted the viewer to, to, to their eye to travel through this painting. So if I take a look here, let me grab a brush. Some of the things I did, if you look at this original photo, you know, there's a little bit of a line here that I've taken out. I didn't want to have these, I didn't want to have something blocking the viewer from coming in. Um, but there's no real strong approach to how the, the eye travels in here, even when I cropped it. It's a little bit better here. Um, but what I chose to do was to create these sort of what's called leading lines that come in like this. And it looks sort of like, um, like if this is where the animals or the tractors, etc., in the summer come in and out of this barn, so, you know, they would beat down the grass a little bit more here. So when there's a little bit of snow, these look flatter. And so those become sort of a leading line into the painting here. And then, so what I'm, what I, what I chose to do is this is my center of interest. So I have my leading line coming up and pulling the viewer in this way, like this. They get in here. And if their eye travels up a little bit this way, they catch this. But then, again, because these edges are softer and these are harder, and because these birds are, are coming into the painting, it leads the viewer back over here. And then you've got the second center of interest down here, which is this area. And then, of course, the shape of this tree and then these rocks here pull these right back down like this. So I've got a nice flow of... of the eye traveling around through this painting. So that's how I approached the composition and then the paint application to create visual interest and in leading lines going into the painting. Now, in addition to that, what I do, get back to my magnifying tool, because I don't want the eye to come over here and get to this hard edge of the canvas, what I do instead, that part of what I do is I treat that both with contrast and with edges. If you look at you know, here's my highest contrast area, so your eye's going to come in here. But look at these edges right here. I'm going even tighter. These are nice hard edges which attract the eye. And then when I get over here, I start to soften these edges. Look at this, the softened edge right up here. So that keeps um, the, the eye from wanting to travel over there as opposed to getting pulled back into the center here. And also, um, you'll see these, these the colors and the, and the values here are closer along here. Um, there's a little bit, there's less contrast going on here than there is right here. Even though the sun would be hitting this pretty hard, or at least as hard as it would be hitting this, I chose not to create as much uh, value contrast here so that I don't draw your attention up over here. So that's part of that process. Um, and the same thing if we're talking about edges, okay, so you tend to, what you want to do is you want to keep your edges sharpest in your, in your centers of interest. 
because your eye will be drawn to them. So my edges here, my hard edges are along here, these lines and on the barn here. Let me switch over to this. So my hardest edges, turn that off, turn the new one on here. My hardest edges are here. And then my hardest edges are here, along here. So that helps to pull the eye into here and then up and around and over to here. Same thing if you look at my contrast, I've got higher contrast in this area here than I do over here. And I have higher contrast a little bit up in, certainly up in here than I do in some of these. See how this is less contrast over here. So again, that helps to pull you in both the combination of the contrast and the edges, pull you into here and over to here. And, um, you know, there's some other things. So my, my color palette was pretty limited, titanium white, of course, and then ultramarine blue. I do use Payne's gray quite a bit, um, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, and raw umber. So really, you know, just a blue, ultramarine blue, a red, which is my crimson, and then a yellow ochre. And then, you know, the raw umber because there are so many browns in here. And um, my Payne's gray is a nice blue black or blue gray that gives, lets me create some nice darks and darken down some tones where I need them. Um, you know, I chose to, to use just a little bit of cadmium orange, um, both along the wooded, the light, the area of light along this barn board and a little bit along the outside edge of these trees just to warm it up a little bit and um, give it that effect of some light hitting on here. And, but other than that, it's a pretty limited palette, and again, staying in the middle of the, of the saturation range so that I don't get too bright or too oversaturated. And let's see, other than that, um, you know, there are some areas in here that do, do get a little bit thicker strokes, but I kept, you know, I, 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 I kept my paint pretty thin. There's not a lot of brush work that, that jumps right out at you as really thick applications of paint. Um, you know, just even like over here, because I don't want to draw a lot of attention, but I wanted to get this color that's on these. If you look here, I want to get this color that's on here. Um, but I'm just, you know, it's real thin. There's not any heavy strokes going on there. And then even, you know, the dusting of the snow on the tops of the hills, it's really just some lighter color that's scumbled in. And it isn't just one, you know, if you if you look really close here, there's there's darker shades, bluer shades, and then lighter shades on top. So that's multiple applications of paint to get that sort of snow effect on the top of the hills, not just one color. And then same thing up here. Um, see how the hill just disappears into the cloud? Well, that's just a lot of scumbling in layers. There we go. And that's pretty much it. Those are um, sort of the, the major choices that I made. Um, if you have questions, if you enjoy this video, I'd love to hear you comment and like this video. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel down below. Uh, if you want to see me actually doing the painting of this, there is a longer video on YouTube that I'll be posting momentarily. And um, I'd love to hear your questions, comments, whether you like these shorter videos with these sort of uh, tips and, and thoughts, or whether you'd rather um, have me do just stick to longer videos. The longer videos are kind of tough to, to produce. Um, but whatever's helpful. Oh, one other thing I'll point out here that I did for these trees is, you know, you don't have to, when it gets to little details like this, you don't have to define too much and you don't have to have all these branches come out. See here, I just apply some little tiny strokes of white that suggests that there's some tips of branches that have caught some snow. Um, and so you see that just like down in here and over here. Oops. Let's get back here, and that you know keeps you from having to define all the too much detail of the branches. You can just suggest these sort of tips that are out here catching some snow. That's about it. Um, like and subscribe. Post your comments down below. Visit my Facebook page, which is posted uh, in the description down below, or my website. And I do maintain a blog as well. So thanks for joining me.